day to do fizz. I got a 30 and I got 40 and I'm never never binge. Vertical Vati, I Gucci the lens. I swear to say Snoopy and friends. Oh. I put my bow last, Jerry. Uh, some people come on in here. Should take a minute to load up. Good soup. We're gonna make a homemade chicken soup. Fine. Where y'all at? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. What's happening there? Well, I can't see the covers. Hold up. Uh, type of comment am I not seeing something I'm still kind of a rookie at this I gotta you gotta forgive me still kind of a rookie what's up with it chat viewing options okay all right boom What's up, y'all? Y'all seen that bars of out of five joint? All my days going blessed, cinnamon roll, I must say. I'm sitting here with my dog, hanging out, seeing the cut. I just made some chicken soup, broke my fast. You know, shit is kind of quiet. I don't, don't dress book life cover. Some good medicine in my lungs. Got a new freestyle. I'm pretty sure it's about to go viral on bars of I-95. You know what I mean? Hit the gritty. I don't really got that yet. I gotta, I gotta give me the footwork on that. I know how to do the arm swing part. Hope you have a great evening, bro. You seem like a really cool guy. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I do my best. You know, I could be an asshole sometimes, but can we all, right? But, um, yeah. Balls on I-95 freestyle out right now, though. You know what I'm saying? On my dead video. On the radar freestyle out right now. Chinatown Sounds freestyle out right now. I just got the ability to collab on my page again, so I'm, I'm hype off that. They're taking the restraints off the wolf. Let me flex a little, you know what I mean? I'm working, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Throwing my weight around out here. Tay Rock battle out, you know what I'm saying? Arguably gentleman 30, you know what I'm saying? By the consensus of the of the of the real uh, you know what I mean? Not the algorithm y uh, you know, get along gang, but the the, the real fans of the culture, they like, yeah, you watch Rocky. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Clean that boy up like a stain, boy. He recycled like 16 bars, all type of shit. But if y'all ain't checked that out, check that out. That's on the URL app. You know what I'm saying? But I've just been putting this pain in, you know? Yeah, I told Gotti, you're going to have to spit the block. You're going to have to spit the block eventually, for sure. What's a cohoot? What's a what? Name that would get you banned? I don't, I don't know what you're trying to say. But anything that would get me banned, I don't want to say. But look, hit the like. Y'all hit the like, right? Hit the like, because that's what's going to make the shit go up. Double tap the screen. We got to start working on this shit. I mean, you know what I mean? I don't be working enough on these platforms. And this is what's going to get my algorithm going. So I got to do my job, right? So I said, you know what? Got a new freestyle out. Let me tie back in with the public. You know what I'm saying? Chop our shit one time. How many of y'all see it? Let me know if y'all see it. But everybody double tap that screen. Pop out. You know what I'm saying? Give me that clack clack one time. You know, she can share the live too. You know what I'm saying? Let them know. Jones over here talking his shit for a second. You know? Oh, yo, you talking crazy. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. 
He said, just listen to some of your shit is fire, bro. Keep it up. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I've been working. G.I. Jones is out right now. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I'm not even saying my album that's out right now, which is the point of that, all of this. G.I. Jones is out right now. You know what I mean? 11 new tracks of fire. You know what I'm saying? I produced, I think, six of them. I think I produced six of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, don't take my word for it, but you know I'm, I'm on a mission, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm on a mission. And I'm not stopping until I'm at the top. You know what I'm saying? They already know how how I bleed. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it like one of them Louisiana. Y'all know how I bleed around. You know, I'm telling out, you know. Know how I'm coming, man. I'm stepping. I wasn't in that, you know, I wasn't in these jams for no reason. You know what I'm saying? I was God. Sat me down. Had to crystallize me a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Get my mind right, get my body a little more right, my spirit, these bars, these plans, these movies, you know what I'm saying? I got all of that shit together, you know, and, and no ditty, it can't all come together like ass cheeks, and we gonna just, you know, make sure that this shit is an epic return to, to glory. Hello? Inshallah. You said... I just swung down Sesame Street and smoked a blunt with Big Bird. Tell my nigga uh, Oscar the Grouch, I said, what up? Stop smoking that trash. Jersey, hard body karate like a solo shot. You already know the vibrations, nigga. Was that a swamp accent? You been this? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if let's see if he was Verb. Let's see if let's see if Verb gonna do what he say. That bag, yeah, man, we on that bag, man. But you know, more so than just the bag, because this is what I learned, y'all. If I was just thinking about money as a rapper, I probably would be a lot more well off by now. I'm not doing that bad by the grace of Allah. I got a place to sleep, got some food to eat. I got a pretty cool dog, you know what I'm saying? I got my freedom, you know? So it's like, I got to be grateful for what I got, but in reality, if I was just one of them niggas that only thought about the money and didn't care about being nice, didn't care about, you know, being dope and wanting to be respected as a dope MC, I would have been way richer off rap a long time ago. Because that's where you actually hinder yourself at when you're a real MC because you don't even want to do shit that you know is kind of corny or whatever, when that's what normally works. That's what makes hit records sometimes. And if you notice, if you look at DMX, different people, they'll tell you, like, they ain't want to make this song. And somebody was like, man, do that shit. And it wound up being a hit. So sometimes as MCs, like, you know, you got to stand it to your pen and all of this type of shit. And you're not a sucker that's not going for certain shit and people can't manipulate you and put you in them rooms and, you know what I mean? Then it's, it's a different road. Sometimes you got to walk a, you know, a hard body of path. You feel me? And that's what it, you know, that's what it wired up here. Say URL killer, huh? What you got next, music or battles? I got both. I got both. G.I. Jones is out right now. Double tap the screen, hit that like button. We about to get this shit rocking again. I'm about to start going live with y'all because we got content out. We got shit we got to promote, right? And I got videos out that only still got a couple thousand views, which is unacceptable. And you know why? It's because niggas don't know. And if they don't know, then I got to tell them, right? And we got to do some form of pushing this motherfucking line, right? So I do got a phone, right? This is free for me to turn this phone on and talk my shit with y'all. So this is what we're going to do a little bit more of, you know what I'm saying, to make sure we get this message and this music and this fire out to the world in the right format. You know what I'm saying? It's literally like combat, you know what I'm saying? So it's G.I. Jones, and we're going to war on this bitch. I'm clipped up, and, I'm, and I've been letting it spray on Tay-Tay, you know what I'm saying, on I Bars on I-95, on On The Radar, on Chinatown Sound, on my own shit. Check out the freestyle we dropped on here. A bunch of them since I've been home. New videos, All My Dead, Homecoming. You know what I'm saying? Listen, first day out. We work it, man. We got to put it all together. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole, it's a movement thing for real. 
you just digesting the energy, if you just kind of catching the wave, it's all right. But catch up with me. You know what I'm saying? Don't think it's one thing or this thing or the Tay Rock battle or this or that. Nah, we, listen, see the frequency we on. I appreciate that, King Honor. Inshallah, all glory to goes to Allah anyway. So, I mean, I definitely have been in a lot of humbling situations recently, but I'm, I'm also remembering, like, you know, it's not about you. I'm just some guy that's blessed with a talent, for real. This is this is God given, and I gotta give credit to Him for it anyway. That's what happens. We get too cocky about it and start feeling like it's us. And this is the talent that you've been given. Whether it's to talk your shit, come up with some fire ideas, you know, that's the talent that God gave you, man. You know, we get drunk in the rap starriness of it, and that's what you lose a lot of times. You heard Pocky say, his life as a rap star is nothing without God. Shout out to Maryland. From northern to southern state. Mm. Yeah, man. Shout out to all my diggers down, too. Oh, yeah, I'm putting mad music out. First of all, I got two projects out right now, if y'all ain't know. It's TCOF, The Cost of Freedom. I dropped that while I was down. So I really didn't get to shoot no videos off that or really promote it like that. So that's like an EP of six joints. And I got G.I. Jones, it's 11 joints that I just dropped like two weeks ago or whatever. All right, so that's streaming on everything, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, you know what I mean? All of the shit. So get in tune with me, G.I. Jones. You know what I mean? Just type it in. Yeah, man. That's a fact. And it's unfortunate that sometimes we got to go through stuff to to really, you know, believe in God more, right? But the imam, when I was locked up, said something that was deep, right? It was like, whenever somebody's about to die, whenever you're about to go through a situation where you know it's like you have no control over it, and it's like everybody starts believing in God then, right? So why it take you to, you know what I mean, go through a situation where you, then all of a sudden it's starting to be like, well, if you if you there and you real, then send me a sub. Why it took you to go through all that to do that? And I, I remember, um, shout out to Arrested Development, you know, I'm a hip hop baby. So I remember the song they had, a Tennessee, Lord, I really been real stressed, down and out, losing clout, although I'm black and proud. Problems got me pessimistic. And he said, what the fuck he said? He said, I know you're supposed to be my steering wheel, not just my spare tire, right? Because that's how we use it. It's, it's supposed to be a steering wheel, not the spare tire. You catch a flat. Now it's God. Bail me out. So the catch-22 of that is, though, I don't like feeling like a hypocrite. So there are times when you know you're living in a way that's less than the way God would probably like you to. Maybe you don't know how to live a better way, right? Maybe you don't know a better option or whatever to do at the time, right? But at the same token, and this is what, you know, I was told by the, you know, imam and people too, because I don't know everything and I wasn't really that religious growing up, you know what I'm saying? Even though I've always been spiritual, but it's like you learn information, it changes how you think about things. So it's like, that's kind of a trick from Satan or the devil or to whether it'll make you feel guilty for even approaching God. Like you too unclean to speak to him. Like, like you're not even supposed to be able to pray because you know you did wrong what you're praying for. Now that's a trick. That's, that's who's supposed to pray. If you never do nothing wrong, you know what I'm saying? Like you're an angel, you're a saint. You know what I mean? You're good. But nah, like, that's not how life works, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I definitely be going through that my damn self sometimes. Y'all know I ain't the motherfucking squeakiest, cleaniest guy. But, you know, I do my best to, to be honorable, to be a man of my word, to be loyal. You know what I mean? And to be a man of God. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm sorry, I'm hungry, y'all. I'm about to pour some of this motherfucking soup. What's good? What's good? 
You say you glad, I'm glad you got your money from the pain instead of the rest of those battle rappers got their money from the shame. Hey, man, say, man. I mean, hello? Yeah. Because, you know, I didn't did mine the, the hard way, but the strong way. You know what I'm saying? And no puff the long way. Hello? That's why, you know, we're... Because I be thinking mad times, it's like, damn, it's mad shit that could have went another way. And thank God I didn't, you know, thank God I don't be doing certain sucker shit. You know what I mean? Even though you might have those same instincts, right? Certain shit be happening. And you might just want to do some bullshit because you mad. Somebody did some sucker shit, ran off with something that was yours, uh, you know, talk down on your name, disrespect. You do something that makes you just want to act out of character because you feel attacked, right? You feel like, how dare they, right? Man or female, right? And then when you react, to things that really is beneath your frequency and all that. It's really just, so let's say, you you know, that happened before. I had to get goddamn surgery on my damn hand. I was some guy talking crazy in the barbershop. I can't let you do like that. I'm trying to, you know, come on, man, please, right? I did the please, the, the, tried to do the OG move. I got shorts above my goddamn knees on and some fucking loafers with no socks. I'm not trying... Bro, he, he don't know. He's some young, stupid nigga. It's just respectfully, you know. Bing, bing, bang, 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 boom, boom, bop, 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 now. But now I got to get goddamn reconstructive surgery in my fucking hand. He won. He was probably good in a couple of days, a week, whatever. And I'm sitting there with my fucking hand in a crash and can't even wipe my goddamn ass with my, with my right hand having a hard time wiping paws. I know it's too much information, but that's what I had to go through, man. That's annoying. It's not worth it, it's stupid. But it's like, you know, shit happens. That's why I said in that freestyle, you can't get mad at a wolf for having teeth, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's like, niggas gotta survive and niggas gotta stand up and be men as well. But some people don't understand that at certain points, it's just like, you know, he was calling people. He got on his phone and started calling people. Why would you do that? You know what I mean? When you get on your phone and start calling people to come to come get me, you better be ready to just pop, right? right? Like, that's ridiculous. I'm going to let you call them and let y'all work it out? So I'm like, hold up. I just... <laughs> I was really trying to be peaceful and respectful. I don't even be telling y'all these stories and shit, but it just be coming on mine. I'm like, yeah, this shit just be don't work for some time. Well, if you if you are saying to somebody, oh, it's up, nigga, I'm about to I'm about to kick your ass, right? And then you get on the phone and proceed to call people in front of me, like, yeah, come down here. You think I'm just about to sit there and just be like. Okay, guys, and just like, let you just set up your whole plan of attack or whatever you're trying to do. <laughs> Bruh, I snatched the nigga's fucking phone out of his hand, right? Because this is what people don't understand about wolfly instincts, first of all. You never turn your back to your fucking enemy, first of all. You don't turn your back to somebody that you're creating a problem with. And mind you, this is years ago, okay? This is years ago now. It's not like it's a recent thing. But it's just a situation that Almost cost, you know, cost me a ligament in my damn hand. And could have been avoided, right? I make it some soup. I make it some, I make some homemade chicken soup. My shit bomb too. And I'm gonna put the, uh, some avocado in there. I'll cut up this avocado and put them in there. But yeah, look, if, if I just snatched his phone out of his hand. Because if you're going to be beef with somebody, you can't sit with your back to them, bro. He was sitting with his back to this phone. I just woke up, take his phone out of his hand. Excuse me. Put it in my back his pocket. Come on, man. Get up. Hey, give me my phone, man. Give me my phone, man. <laughs> just come on. Come outside, right? <laughs> come outside, right? And this is where we got to bring back this, right? To all of my niggas that if you have to get in a problem with somebody... And you know that it's a, you know, for lack of a better term, a, a B word, uh, A word, nigga. I don't know, if, you know, which one. Because I don't want to get, 
I gotta stop cursing so much because maybe that's why they keep, you know, shadow banning me and stuff. So if you if you're just clearly a, a punk, right, and sometimes you can get away with the mush, right? Remember the mush? That was like the high school thing, right? The mush is where it's five fingers to the face, but it's not a slap, it's not a punch, but it's just a like, it's still oh damn. Okay. They just start lazy, being lazy and just get an actual knife to cut this instead of trying to do it with a fucking spoon, but I'm lazy sometimes. Man. But long story short, the mush normally, like, if that can work, you can avoid having to fight or having to shoot somebody in here that, right? Because that's a right there thing that if you don't react to that right away, it's over. Like, you already ate it. Like, so it's like, yo, stop playing on me, bro. Like, yo, stop. And then it's just a mush. And then they go like, if he, he sit at that moment, pause, no diddy, then it's like, it's already over. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, come stop playing, bro. Ah, ah. And it's like, oh, it's over, right? But a lot of people, they're not, your pride is like, you know, so he he, he almost let it rock. And then he did one of those, and just ran at like full speed like a rhino and tried to, yeah. But I stay away from certain places and situations now just deliberately because it's like people do be dumb and they don't know. It's like, bro, this is my block, bro. Like, there, you know, I can't, I don't know, something connected there too. That's like, you just can't allow certain things on your block, like in front of your peoples. And it's like, even though they might be like, nah, let me, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold on. Boston, what's popping, Boston? Uh, I was I was just randomly talking about. I just looked at my hand and was thinking about how I tore a ligament fighting some stupid guy in a barber shop. Just talking about keeping your energy above the bullshit. You know what I mean? It's not worth it. Not worth your time. Not worth the energy. Crystallizing on a high level. You know, talking about also this i nine five on freestyle that I just dropped. Just I kind of walk that shit. On the radar, freestyle is out. G.I. Jones, the album is out. TCOF, EP is out. Uh, Chinatown Sound Freestyle is out. So, it's a lot of work I've been doing. But, you know, I do need to, do need to kind of build, build with y'all, right? Because I haven't really been the most you know, go live on, on the internet type of guy over the years. And um, even though I've built a name as, you know, a legend or whatever in the culture, now it's about the algorithm, right? Now it's about this algorithm. So the only way for you to push the attention towards your products and music, oh, and the Art of World War book, what the hell is wrong with me? I have a book out because The Art of World War, which is basically a, a manual. Um, yeah, we could say it's a manual. It's a how-to. And it also is giving you the history of the, of the culture, for real. A battle rap. It's the battle rap handbook, a.k.a. The Art of World War. That's available on Google Play, Audible, Storytel. Just type that shit in. You can find that as well. So, yeah, we've been doing a lot of work, y'all. You know what I mean? Hit the like button. Share this shit. I said I'm going to come in here and chop it up with y'all for a second today based on the new freestyle. Get your ass down. Sherry's on the freestyle. She was like, everybody in the comments talking about she was looking like she was ready to spit next. You ready to spit, Sherry? Yeah. Say hello. Say hello, YouTube. Yeah, she's she's a spoiled girl. She's spoiled and she's just trying to come over here and eat my food and shit, you know. Um, name a car for an edit. I don't know what you mean by that, sir. I've been thinking about it, like, what does that mean? Hit up Diddy before he go away. 
Y'all ain't right, man. Y'all really want to see that man go away, honey. Y'all don't even know what's up. If I seen some proof or something, I might be like, all right, what did he say and what did he really do? Like, if they really had some shit, trust me. But the feds, yeah, the been issue that warrant. Stop. Sit down. You can't have my soap. No. You just ate, bro. Greedy as hell. Greedy. But yeah. I've been to Diddy's house before. <laughs> no Diddy though. <laughs> Definitely been there. A couple Diddy parties. Maybe on the Breakfast Club or something to talk about. Stop it. You're starting to be rude now. Okay? Cooking you all this gourmet shit from scratch and you still gonna come over here and think you supposed to eat my shit too. Like, like, come on, bro. Just because you're a girl, you don't gotta be typically ungrateful. Hey, shit, look, and then you're gonna try to shut me up? This is my house, okay? Those on some shit, y'all. She like, fuck what you talking about. Do my language. But yeah. What y'all think about all that stuff, man? Tell me. When it comes to certain accusations, is it just when it's just some freaky shit, it's just, you know. You automatically guilty? Cause why are you even involved in some shit like that? Or how does that work? Stop! You gonna make me put you in a goddamn in a cage? Stop making me be mean, bro. Cause I'm about to I'm about to just hit you with the you know what, and you don't like that. Talk to me about that, cause I'm like. I know my logic on stuff is a little more like, I don't want to say like, you know, traditionally street, like, because I've been in trouble with the law and because I've seen how cases and situations could like look crazy and not be valid, you know what I'm saying? But I know when it comes to certain things, right, if you got like, say, a, a get off me charge or something, right, you got one of them R charges. If you in the bullpen or something, they not going to care about waiting to see if it's true or not. They're going to say, oh, yeah, that, that boy's a rapist right there. You know what I mean? They're going to try to take your commissary, do you dirty, everything. The police gonna might even tell everybody about it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to let them know. I know, right? She's like, that's what she does. She's just going to keep going until I give her peace. And that's why she's, like, relentless when it comes to getting her pieces. And see, so you, you done turned the damn, my own damn fans against me now. See, this is what you do, man. Why are you so persuasive? Because you're my dog? All right, huh. No, you can't eat it off the spoon. Here. Here. All right. All right, now, can I eat my food now, please? Please? Sit, please. Sit. 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 Sherry, sit. You know sit. You're embarrassing me on YouTube. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Anyway. I'm nice in this kitchen, too, y'all. My shit is fire. One day. And I'm old and settled enough. I'm going to have a serious cooking show or something. We're going to get busy. I'm going to show you all these, 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 these from scratch-ass recipes that I'll be coming up with. that would be fire. And I'll be like, ooh, I did that? 
be freestyling shit. I just bought two new Caribbean seasons, some jerk seasonings. So this is jerk chicken, tomato, avocado, onion, pepper soup. See all them bubbles and all that shit? That shit is all flavor, B. Look, she trying to lick the food, slip the shit off my pan. Ain't no soup there. Yeah. But anyway, for those that's just coming on here, if you ain't already know, bars on I 9 5 freestylers out right now. I don't walk this shit like this dog right here. Probably needs to be walked. Stop fucking my YouTube up. Sit down. You got me cursed. I'm not supposed to curse on here, man. You're going to get me banned. Anyway, bars on I 9 5 freestyle out right now. Also on the radar freestyle out right now. Also on my dead video out right now. Also Chinatown Sound freestyle. Also the Auto World War book and G.I. Jones, the album. All right? I need y'all to subscribe, hit like. Stay in tune with what I got going on. I'm going to go live a little more often so we can really get this algorithm in a rhythm. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I've been a little sporadic with it. Here and there. You know. Yeah, the Cassie, to be honest, it seems like Cassie Payday just a bandwagon. Yo, this is what they do to everybody, bro. Bill Cosby. Now, R. Kelly... That's a different story. So we can't even act like, no, that's different. But niggas knew that shit for years. He married Leah when she was 15. You know what I'm saying? Like, respect to the dad. You have a question? Ask your question. Yeah, not all on my channel. On the Radar Freestyle is on, on the Radar's channel. Bars on I-95 Freestyle is on, bar, is on I-95 channel. Chinatown Sound Freestyle is on Chinatown Sound Freestyle. But all of these are on my Instagram page, which is The Real Serious Jones. And all of the videos, my videos is on my page. You know what I mean? Bruh, you got a pocket. Nigga, them think I don't feed you or something. You sound so, like, that's what's crazy, too. I know that sounds like, aww. And you just ate a whole meal. Like, they don't know that. You are a master manipulator, you know that? Did you learn this from me? Because I don't, that's not one of my moves. Mm -hmm. How much do I want you to donate? To me, to the Life of Sirius, Sirius Jones Foundation. Hi, do I remember you? Um, these avatars are really, 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 really small. So it literally just looks like a dot in the middle of some clouds. Stop it! You owe Dan, bruh. And you don't like that I'm on live because you always do this. Because you just be hating when I do anything other than give you attention. I need to find, like, a, a girl to babysit you or something, bro. Because you've been spending too much time around me. She literally, like, is, look. She's... Sit down, Shannon. All right, here, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to eat my soup. I'm going to let you have some, some of this broth and, and the avocado. All right? Hmm. As a matter of fact, this is too much spices for you, bro. You know, you ain't supposed to eat no jerk stuff. Hmm. What kind of avocado, bro? Avocado and some potatoes. Hmm. Got some potatoes. Go ahead. 
on here, so you can't eat it like that. Y'all nigga booming, still listening to that song? Salute, bro. I somehow found out, I forgot who called, who hit me and said that, but they was like, Y'all nigga booming is like 14 on the iTunes charts in South Africa. I was like, word? That's fire. That shit fucked me up. You never know what your music doing until you put it out, man. So apologies to all of my real fans that, you know, I'm not just talking to y'all here, but just everybody in general that's going to see this. We're going to keep it organic. I'm going to just throw this up. But um, apologies for holding on to this music, bro. Like, I got, I don't know how many albums of music that I just never put out to y'all yet. Because honestly, I don't believe in not succeeding. I like the shit I'm doing to work. You know what I'm saying? I don't like not to have at least 100, 200 bands on my video. You know what I mean? I come from the era of being a bougie, top of the food chain MC. Like, you know what I'm saying? My first videos ever was getting millions of views. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, it's work though. You feel me? Especially when you been doing it this long and you know what I mean? So these Tay Rock battles, this motherfucking bars on F fives, these on the radars, these these opportunities to showcase your greatness to the world. I gotta step up to the plate. And y'all see I've been stepping up to the plate like a fat man. You know what I'm saying? By the grace of a law. So you know we gotta keep this shit going. Gotta keep this shit going. I appreciate y'all support. So, homie that said, what's up with my cash app? Um, you could DM me on the gram or something because that kind of scares me when you're talking like that. I, I hope that's not a bad thing because I really do appreciate anybody that wants to donate or show any type of financial support for me to really, you know, keep living this dream and keep putting out this, you know, this pain. You know what I'm saying? So... But at the same token, I know it's a lot of scammy shit and people on the internet that, you know, oh, we got his cash app and then there'll be some funny shit with my cash app. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck going on? I don't know, sir, your cash app has been closed indefinitely. Oh, goddamn YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? I ain't trying to go through that man, right now, bro. So tap in with me. If it's for real, I, you know, it's love. You know what I'm saying? Who'd I battle last? Nah, I just battled Tay Rock, man, two weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? Carved a sculpture out of rock face. I'm indigenous. Yeah, I did, you know, I did some really special shit in that ring that I think just like an artifact, how sometimes it appreciates value over time. Yeah. We dealing with that type of sandwich, with that. You know what I'm saying? It's to the point where like, I let it marinate for like two weeks. I only put like a clip or two out, right? And I watched them put all these clips of him recycling the same bars he said against me, of of him saying, Reach is talking about series is serious. Did a whole series of series, serious bars. I'm like, and I'm watching niggas trying to drag it like, yeah, rock got him. And I'm like, I just put one clip out that was a minute long and just put the visuals and all the bars of it. And it's like, niggas is like, yeah, yeah. It's a whole different fucking sandwich, nigga. The concentration level of the bars, the potency, the substance, it's just a whole different level, bro. And it's clear. Shout out to those that did recaps. There was one video, they had like the London voice that was killing me. That shit was hilarious. It was like, they called me a beacon of hope. I was like, they said in the dark period of the URL, uh, a beacon of hope is the legend series chill. I was like, oh! Yeah, me sounding like, it was sounding like this. Right? It sounded like Braveheart, that Braveheart on the screen. It was making me sound like William Wallace. Like, yeah, that's how we trying to get, come on now. Yes, sir. How we get that battle? You go on the URL TV app, and you basically just buy it. 
Get the URL TV app. Just type in URL TV in the app store. Buy the app. And they got a bunch of, you'll see all the battles with Sirius Jones on there. Just type in my name and it'll show you. Boom. You know what I mean? But yeah, I've been definitely stepping like a kappa. Every time I get a, a mic in front, oh. And the King Clive TV freestyle. Cypher about to drop too. Yeah, man. So, let's recap. For those that's just coming on here. Hello, love. King, kitten, God. Um, it is, let's start from the beginning. Raising the stock video. You know what I'm saying? I think that's only still at like 14, 15,000 views. That's unacceptable. It's disrespectful to me. Okay. Also, uh, homecoming video, right? Sherry's first appearance on camera. First day out video. First joint I dropped when I came home. On my dad's video. Last one we just dropped recently. It's a bunch of in between just song title freestyle joints where I just just played the song and just gave y'all a preview, but we're not even counting those as visuals, you know, videos. Um, Freestyle-wise, we got Chinatown Sound. It's the acapella one they do downtown, which is fire. We got On The Radar, which is definitely one of the top premium platforms in existence. We got Bars on I-95, which just dropped yesterday. All right, so I'm making my rounds... I got podcasts. You know, we did a bunch of interviews. I don't even know how many interviews is out. It's probably fucking 100 interviews out by now. But for those that don't understand the, the concept of it, people were saying, hey, Jones is spreading himself thin. They, they was acting like there was no method to my madness. Like, I'm just on the internet in these spaces and shit for no reason. No, bro, it's called shaking the trees. It's not an accident I'm getting booked back to back as the main event at these things. They see the algorithm raising. They see the work I'm putting in paying off. Otherwise, they wouldn't make me the main event versus Tay Rock. They would have another battle or whatever. Or they would have that battle and it still wouldn't be the main event. It'd be somebody else. Same thing with Geechee. And people like to sweep under the rug that they only announced Mook and Twerk and me and Geechee. And the event was sold out in two weeks. It's not an accident, bro. It's like, I know I get the Floyd factor. You know, I get the, you know, people want to see you lose when they, when they think you think you're such a winner. But a lot of people just don't understand me yet. They don't know my life. They don't know my struggle, my pain. They don't even know what I go through to know. Like, if you knew, you'd be like, oh, no, this is a cool ass nigga. If you was going through that, nigga. Yeah. So the fact that I might, you know, talk a little crazy on the internet to a battle rapper or, you know what I'm saying, seemingly be, you know, an asshole at times, you know, when that's my job to be here talking shit to motherfuckers, you know, it's just perception is reality. So the documentary is another very important piece of the puzzle, I feel like, of this new movement and this new wave, because it's going to give y'all the backstory. It's going to show y'all, like, the people in my life, my moms, my, you know, what I really come from, what made me what I am. So you understand, and, it, and it, the substance is going, you're going to digest it, pause a lot better. What's up, baby? What you want? You want the attention? Okay. Said peace, gun, top five. Appreciate that, brother. The King, Al the King album you had was my favorite, bro. Respectfully, King Me. Might definitely still be one of my most best complete projects. I think this G.I. Jones project is on par with that, to be honest. But King Me, definitely. Salute, brother. This live should need to be on... This live shit need to be your therapy. <laughs> it kind of is, bro. You see me just up here running my mouth with y'all and just, you know, I'm somebody that sometimes I have to say things out loud to myself to hear them. You ever, you ever been like that? Or like when you hear yourself saying something out loud, it's like, yeah, it's validation. 
Some people would think that means you're full of shit because you're just going, talk, talking as you go. But it's like, no. Some people just, they let go and just let their thoughts develop. And when you hear them, you say them out loud, it becomes a real rhythm. It can becomes a real idea. And if you take that thought and actually put it down on paper or, 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 or see it through, then it becomes a real thing. So I know the power of speech. I know the power of just this right here. So this is real organic, real chop right here what I'm doing with y'all. I know a lot of people be capping and just, you know, I'm really just being, I'm going to be me. If y'all fuck with me, cool. I love you back. You know what I'm saying? This is the most 100 zone that I think you can find. And I will try to do, not try. Try is just an excuse for failure. I will do a better job at maintaining a relationship with y'all on this level, on the organic and we ain't got to be doing nothing but just talking shit and swallowing on spit level. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Inshallah. Because that's why I really feel like, you know, no ditty, the meat of the sandwiches. That's that's what, you know, that's the shit. Well, you could just wake up and we might just be on here talking shit about something and it just be a, you know, something that just makes you make the right decision with something. You know what I'm saying? Or be be mentally in the right space to 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 get through your day. By the grace of Allah, that's what I want to be to somebody. You know what I'm saying? If anything, I want to help shit. I want my experiences, somebody be able to learn from that shit. I want niggas to be better rappers. You know, I want us to get more money. I want to steal the sharp and steal, man. I want to see my people win and thrive. You know, Allah he. Allah know my heart. That's... That's what I really would love to see. A nation of kings and queens living up to the potential. You know what I'm saying? And I'm doing my best to be a better example. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta uh, pardon me my language. I'm still, still curse a lot, man. You know, getting certain things together, man. You know, I've been fasting. Shout out to my Ramadan, you know, my, excuse me, Ramadan Mubarak, but shout out to my believers in Islam and in the law. Um, I definitely have not been doing my prayers to the best, but I've been fasting every day, though. I've been not eating from sunup to sundown. I took a few sips of water here and there, and I smoked some weed, but I didn't eat, though. You know what I mean? And it's it's not an easy commitment, trust me. What's your number? How I call? Well, being that you're just a letter Z on the internet, I don't think that's probably a good idea that I just give you my number right now. So, there's that. He said, we're writing our own book in the Bibles, bro. We're the chosen ones when you're trying to constantly make realizations. Yes, I believe we are the chosen ones. And you know why I believe that? Because... We're the people of the sun. We're the people of the sun. We're the people that seemingly have the most life flowing through us. You know what I'm saying? We vibrate high, even as, even as, even at the low. That's what's crazy, right? Cause I was just telling my homie this yesterday. Tomorrow it's gonna be a young nigga from. Mississippi or wherever that just came home, you know, from being the body or something and going to drop a first day out and it's going to be fire and go crazy. And he going to be some, some kid from the bottom, right? Shirt off, tattoos, probably some 10 karat golds in his mouth, but he going to have that glow to where the whole world is going to be like, damn, who this little kid? That's something that you can't train that. You can't teach that. That's just something that we either blessed with or not. And think about how many young brothers 
are just blessed with the gift to, to, to fly through the air doing 360s through the legs and to, you know, make songs from scratch where you're not even, you coming off the top of the head and it's just, it's not even, you're not even writing it down. To Jordan Peele, people like this that become the top directors in Hollywood because you have the vision, you have, you have this inherent ability to manifest. You can just do dope shit because you are dope shit. Hello? Come on now. Black is beautiful, nigga. We just dope. Now, that's not to take nothing away from, and shout out to, you know, I love all, all my people and white white people, white uh, girls and, and dudes is definitely out here breaking the mold nowadays, you know what I'm saying? Got white boys, Mac McClung, shout out to him, win the dunk contest, you know what I'm saying? We got, you know, you walk down to, to the gym, you see girls, white girls in there with, with Nigerian looking fatties nowadays, just natural. Be like, damn. Evolution in the motherfucker, I like, it's crazy. But you know, at the core, you know, I love my people, man. I love us, man. Only a fool thinks they can solve the world's problems. Mm. I love you too, Jay. Well, that's one way to think about it, but another way to think about it is, what type of man would you be if you don't try to solve any of the world's problems? You know? Why would I be having a bad time? I'm not having a bad time, now. I'm actually feeling very blessed right now. Only thing that is like a certain shit I never share with y'all, like one thing that I really go through a lot that I never really told y'all is pain, right? I had a lot of scar tissue. I had a lot of surgeries. And I was stabbed five times in my side. Big ass hunting knife. Um, I have, you know, issues physically where if I don't work out consistently, do sit ups, pull ups, and really keep my shit limber, where you don't hear cracks like that and shit, then shit start tensing up, shit start going back to how it was when it was fucked up, when that tissue be locking up. It's some shit, it's some shit, some, it's something that just, that's what happens when you got war wounds and shit like that. That's why we say when it rains and stuff like that, because it's just certain physical things that just sometimes never go away. So I got some of those and Honestly, it's probably what made me a little crazier. Because I remember when I really, what my man uh, CeeLo Green said, I remember when, I remember when, I remember when I lost my mind. Yeah, it was something so special about that day. I think I remember the day I lost my mind, if, if that was the thing. I remember the day where it was like, you know what, fuck it. Like, and you know what would take you there? Pain. Pain will take you there. And ironically, when you're dealing with life, especially certain genres of life, there's built-in pain. There's built-in things when you lose your homie, when this girl that you thought believed in you betray you, you know, when everything was going great, when your family member that you thought loved you for real is just looking at you like a, a meal ticket and mad at you because you don't want to give them what you ain't even got. You know, this is built in pain that is just going to come with the game. That you got to be able to literally what they call stomach, right? Now that's why they say, well, you can't stomach certain things. You notice when somebody, or you see in the movies when somebody sees it, they don't normally put this type of stuff in the movies. When somebody sees a dead body or something, or see somebody get shot in the head or something, get a wiggy, they throw up. They throw up because it's not natural. It's something that's so against your whole nature that your body can't even take it because your, your, your stomach is your second brain, right? So if your stomach, if you got stomach issues and if you got gut 
health issues. That's why they call it gut health. It's literally like your it's a brain. So you literally be will be off balance and, and certain things will make you even more in pain physically because of its it, it is pain. It's literal pain. You know what I'm saying? That's why you see in the movies a girl getting up, you know, you tell her something, she'll hold her stomach sitting in the corner like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how girl lose the baby, all type of shit like that. Stuff a law. Because gut, your gut is a brain. Pause. It's your second brain. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of pain that I hid from y'all over the years because I was just raised where it's weak if you complain. You don't share certain stuff. And plus, it wasn't that era back then anyway. Now we're in the era of you could turn your phone on and say, this is my journey to health. You know, I'm not getting high and I'm not popping, you know, perks no more. First day clean or whatever. And people will be there cheering you like, yeah, that's dope, right? Because you're showing vulnerability, something that most people don't be doing. But nowadays, that's such a thing that people would damn near follow that before a nigga just stutting and showing you the bread and, the, you know, pulling up in the Rolls Royce or whatever. People will feel more connected to something human than something somebody's really going through. Meanwhile, I got all the human issues. I got all the crazy real life pain shit, the, the, the drama, the, the game, the girls, the love heartbreak. I got all of that built in, but I ain't been sharing it. I don't say nothing because I don't like people knowing my business because I don't want to look like, why am I caring, right? Your job is to be an artist. Your job is to share your pain, Jones. This is what I'm realizing more, even though it's never, you know, it's never too late. But I'm realizing a lot more that it's actually my responsibility to share the, the pain and the journey for those that is out there going through it to know, look, you know how bad, you know, you know how easy it could have been for me to quit and give up? You know how much I had to fight to be here right now? You know how much every inch of my soul I had to use to fight just for my freedom, first of all, twice. One verse 60 years or some shit, and one verse 5 to 10 years. Back to back. Both situations is me being an idiot behind thinking with my heart. Not really my heart, but yeah. Thinking like I can just and know. So back to back, boom, boom. Gut shots folding you. Oh, what? Out the blue, you don't even see that shit. Took three lawyers, y'all. Three. That first case, in Cali first case in California had three different lawyers, yo. The first guy comes to the cell, right? First guy, first of all, his name is Elliot Silva. This guy, if you're ever in trouble, don't ever... <laughs> No. This guy comes to the thing. I had to pay him $1,500 just for him to come to the jail, pause, and do the consultation, right? Dude comes through with flip-flops on and got blue toenail polish on his big toe. You got suit pants on. And you know how some people have that weaselly look where they actually look like an animal in real life, like a weaselly rodent-y type of look? Right? He kind of had that look. He was like a big gopher, a beaver, weasel type of look. And he's sitting there saying all the right stuff. Yeah, I know how this stuff is, man. You know, sometimes these girls get in their feelings and just make up stuff. It's crazy because, you know, I can tell this is this is fake. Don't worry. You know, you're going to beat this. You da, 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 da. He's saying all the good stuff, right? Just, you know, $10,000 retainer. Okay, leave on the phone with my peoples, working it out. Boom, get him the bread. 
all of a sudden he ain't answering the phone no more. This is a classic move. If you ever in trouble and a lawyer does this, get your money back if you can and fire that motherfucker because this is a first move, right? So this is this is movie shit, y'all. This is what I'm and this is no kizzy, I promise you, right? Watch what I'm about to tell y'all. By the way, we're here for a purpose. Bars on I-95 Freestyle Out. On the radar Freestyle Out right now. Chinatown Sound, G.I. Jones, the album, and the Art of World War book is on sale right now. You could type any one of those in. But back to the story. So, boom. Dude not picking up the phone. This is the messed up part about what jail does to family structure, too. Because when you're in jail, people automatically kind of, they're not sure whether you even did the thing or something, right, that you in there for. So they're already kind of on the fence, like, you know what I mean? They love you, they gonna hold you down, but in the back of their mind, they thinking that you was probably tripping on somewhere along the line, right? They don't know the real story, and you can't get on the phone and explain it over a jail phone, right? So you might be in jail for however long, while your peoples don't really know the nitty gritty of the story, right? But if they love you, they gonna, they gonna ride for you, right? And if they know who you are as a person, usually, you know, usually that's enough for your family that really loves you to still be connected to you and not feel like, eh, you know. But at the same token, they also kind of thinking like, mm, I don't know, right? So when you're telling them, look, this lawyer, I don't know about this guy, right? They thinking, look, you just being paranoid. You need to let stuff work out because you always think you know. And that, you know what I'm saying? You know how your parents think, you know, they still thinking of you as the same you you probably was when you was a teenager in their mind. You know what I'm saying? You still doing the same stuff. It's probably how they thinking, right? And they might be right on some level, right? Because we are who we are, right? But long story short, this is the part that they don't know, because, but you've developed. You develop these type of instincts, really pimp stinks, because meaning, meaning as a player, to understand like when somebody's lying to you, when somebody's pretending that everything's all good, but they're spinning you because it don't feel right. I know by how this, this pause, this feels wrong. You know what I'm saying? I could tell he's being weird, right? Even when you get in contact with him and he's trying to, oh yeah, it was no problem. I was just, uh, I was out of the office. How's everything going? The fuck you mean, how's it going? Nigga, I'm in jail facing 60 years and I couldn't get you on the phone for two weeks, nigga. And we're going to court tomorrow. What the fuck? No, it's it's all good. Um, da, da 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 right? Tells you whatever you think you need to know. We get to court, right? Now it's COVID, so there's nobody in the courtroom. It's just the judge, the prosecutor, uh, another bailiffs, you know what I mean, and the and the the stenographer, whatever that name is, the girl that writes stuff. And the lawyer. Behind me is a skinhead. Shout out to Smasher. That's his name, Smasher, from the Bay Area. I think he's from Coco County. They call him the Coco Boys. White boys out there don't play in Cali, right? So shout out to Smasher. The lawyer comes up, and he looks at me, and he says like this. You need to get realistic about the fact that you're going to prison, man. I said, what? One, he's talking loud as hell, right? And I'm like, yo, lawyer voice, like, what the fuck? And I was so confused that he was saying this shit. I wasn't even mad. I was just confused. Like, wait, what? Like, why is he saying that, right? So he's like, I said, what? Why would you say that? He said, look at all these convictions, man. Look at all these convictions, bro. I look at the paper, the discovery. What he's pointing at is one case that I literally got dismissed and was not guilty of that was listed several times on the same paper because it was the paper from that day. And, you know, Discovery be having mad different papers of whatever it is in there. You know what I realized in that moment? This guy, Elliot Silver, did not even read my fucking Discovery, y'all. Months after I paid you, 10 bands, I believe it was 85 or nine, you still didn't even read the papers? And you trying to sell me out. This is what I didn't. And so, so when the dude's saying, he's still talking loud, saying all this stuff. So I'm like, so when I say that to him, he just backs up and goes, oh. So I'm like, oh, when he said that, that's when I realized this nigga ain't even read my discovery. I'm like, 
So he starts talking again, saying some weird shit like, well, um, we can work something out. Oh, so you're trying to sell me up the river. You're trying to talk loud so that they can hear the fact that you trying to tell me to, to cop out. You want them to know, see, I'm trying to get them to cop out, y'all. That's the move you're doing. The skinhead smash him. Wallahi, shout out to him. He says, I don't even, my bad, I don't mean to call you a skinhead smash. I don't know what you is, but you know what I mean? He's, he's with the woods. He goes, fire him, bro. Fire him. Now, mind you, we don't even communicate like that on some California politics shit. The Woods and, 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 and brothers, you know, you probably can on certain levels, but in, in certain ways, like, you're not supposed to eat with them. You can't work out together. You're not supposed to use the same phone, same TV. Like, it's a whole protocol. He said, he looked at me straight. He said, fire him right now, bro. I looked at him because I, I was just so shocked and confused. I'm like, what's going on right now? Because I'm like, if you read any of these papers, you would already see this case is ridiculous. But you didn't even read it. You got me in court after I gave you 10 bands trying to sell me out to the judge and the DA out loud. Like, see, I'm giving them up for y'all here. We can work something out. You want me to make a plea deal to 60... Come to find out, I didn't even notice till later. And he lucky that I ain't, you know, when I get my thing together, I might actually have to, you know what I mean? But I just been doing my thing, so. But I called his ass when I got out, too. And you know what he said? He said, how'd you get out? I said, I hired a lawyer. He like, oh. I say, yeah, so um, I'm going to need my money back. Because this is why I come to find out, right? They did make me an offer. He just never told me, right? Because you in there negotiating from the door on a case that, one, I'm clearly not guilty of, and two, you ain't even discussed with me as your client to say, yo, I'm about to go in there and try to negotiate some shit. Because I would tell you, nah, hold up. Like, what? First of all, that makes us look weak. Why is you going trying to negotiate with them because you really think that it's okay for me to go to fucking prison, apparently. Elliot Silver. So this guy made a deal, but didn't tell me for 15 years. They're talking about, yeah, we're offering 15 years. So this guy, that's what he meant when he came to court talking about out loud, because the DA probably already knows this, right? And the judge. So when he's saying that out loud, trying to say, you're going to prison, man. So just, da -da -da. I was supposed to say right there, like, all right, man, well, what's the lowest we can get, bro? Like, that's what you thought you was going to have me do, right? So I fired him. You know what I mean? I was the cow they were selling. Yeah, it's business. You know what I'm saying? They was just, you know, like, yeah, we got this one right here. You know what I mean? And the first guy, this was actually the second lawyer I had. The first lawyer I had came in there. He looked like he looked like Larry Bird's little brother, like Gary Bird or some shit. The nigga was a skinnier Larry Bird, and like he had these this just little beak. Remember, and he was just sitting there the whole time, just like this, right? And the first thing he said, where I knew it was bad, was he was like, "She doesn't look like a drug addict to me." I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, well, I mean, she is. I, I haven't seen this person in six months, and I have nothing to do with them. They just tried to report a car stolen. It had nothing to do with me, and the guy who sold the car is the one that brought my name up. It was like clearly it was some foo-foo shit. It wasn't no I was sending this bitch and this and that, and it was none of that, right? It was a weird scenario that this case even came together. Because it's like, oh, a nigga at the end of the rope somewhere. Okay, let's squeeze on that. Pause. That's that's what happened. So the first guy's like, literally like, just sitting there blinking and just being like, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, nah. He wouldn't, he said, I'm not even coming, I don't have time to come here and show you the, he showed me, it was three, this is how much they willing to get a nigga, bro. This is how much we are valuable to them. Take, listen to what I'm saying clearly, my niggas. They will pay a witness against you 
$5,000 a month. They will house them. They will provide a person just to coach them in how and what to say and really make them and convince them that they're some victim and all of this stuff, knowing that is cap. Knowing, saying in the paperwork, yeah, this this is this is this doesn't make sense. You can't just be sitting here lying to me because you got caught in a situation. This is what they're saying in the paperwork to the person. They're saying like, yeah, she's just like, this doesn't make sense, nothing she's saying. They're talking to each other and it's on the record in the transcript. That should be a quick, easy, anybody reading this, oh yeah, well, it doesn't even make sense. It was an hour and a half interview that had nothing to do with this guy. An hour and a half into it, all of a sudden, this guy comes up and it becomes a whole nother story now that now you're passionate about this story too, right? The first story was some passionate crying story that was capped. Then it was another one. So it's like, if you're an actual detective, you got enough sense to say, yeah, this is bullshit. And they're saying it in the papers. But they didn't care when it come down to getting my ass. They said, oh, well, we can try to make this something, right? We're going to make, we're going to get something out this nigga. And they did. And they did. They got something out. My California got something out my ass. I, I give them that, you know. But um, that's exactly what they thought. Look at this bald nigga. I'm about to make you a slave right fast, even if for a couple years, right? So long story short, the last lawyer I had, shout out to Colin Cooper, who is a warrior. He is a small white man with a huge, uh, I wouldn't say heart, but I, I mean, he's got a huge lawyer IQ. And he's definitely got a, a hard body approach to the law. And he told me the first conversation I had with him, he said, honestly, bro, you are better off with a murder charge than this. I'm like, what? I'm again like, what the hell's up with these lawyers? <laughs> like, why would he say that to me, right? And I, he's like, yeah, you're better off with a murder because he said if it's just some murder in the projects, he said he said not to be racist, but if it's just some murder in the projects or some gang stuff, nobody cares. When it's a you know a you know what, and a black man, even if they know it's bullshit, this is the perfect era for this bullshit. It's the Me Too movement, all of this extra shit. So they're not even gonna feel no way when they find out it was Cap. They don't do nothing to these bitches when they find out they're lying. Part of my language. That's the crazy part. When you find out somebody was capping and, and, it, and it wasn't valid, and they literally took somebody's freedom, time away from their children, ruined families, and don't nothing happen to them behind it. Because you know why? It's a nigga. And they're going to say, well, shit, you a nigga, you a street nigga anyway. Like, you probably did it. They don't care. And that's what I realized, like, you know what I mean? That, but that lawyer, he said, you, you better off. Whatever he said, but I'm, he said, it's going to be a fight for your life. He was right. He said, this is going to be a fight for your life. But he said, but if I'm willing to fight if you are. So that's what I mean about fighting. You know how many times, how many people I've seen in those positions in themselves where you just, you know what I mean, you're away from your whole family. I'm in a whole nother part of the country. I didn't see not one, I didn't have no visits out there. I don't know nobody out there. You got no visits. You got nobody that's, you talking to people on the phone. You can see that people, you know, still got love for you, so-called, whatever. But you know how much that breaks people down? That's why the county is for it's to make you cop out. They're giving you them bologna sandwiches and all that shit. So, you know, you want to get to prison to eat some real food. That's how I was. I really wanted to go to prison at one point when I was in there because I'm like, I don't want to be around these clowns and drug addicts. And I want to be able to just chill in my own cell and watch TV and, and work out and go to programs and all of this other stuff. If I'm going to be in jail, I would rather be, you know what I'm saying? Amongst men, respectfully. Not like I, nobody want to be around. I don't want to be around men. But if I have to, I'd rather be around real niggas instead of a bunch of fiends. You know what I'm saying? Bunch of fiends and undercover moles. 
Because they be doing that, even in the county. I've seen some shit. I got some stories for y'all, man. And I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to let some of these stories go and really, you know, kind of give y'all a clue into what this journey been like, man. But it's been a hell of a journey, trust me. You know. He said, shit, just start walking like far as gum. Mexicans on top. Shout out to the Browns. Shout out to the Raza. I fuck with the Mexicans. Tough. And they fuck with me. I wrote corridos and all that. I got a song like Padrote. Narco traficante. Soy loco bastante. I said, hey, lojote. I said, no dinero, no hable. La calle es mi padre. Hey, hey. Para mi colombiano, dominicano, mexicano, todo mi hermano. Soy moreno puro, pero dinero yo hablo, falo Pablo. Necesito limpiar mi mano, soy un jefe. Hey. They don't know nothing about that right there. But that's that corrido. That's patrote. I'm going to drop that shit. That means a P in Spanish. Privacy is key. Gang shit. Jones cool for that. Serious first good. Oh, you want to see that? Yeah, he talking about hippity, hippity hop and all that shit. Like, people that be hating on me at this phase, do I want $1 million? No. I want a lot more than $1 million. How's fat? I'm, I'm just go through some of y'all comments and read it because I, I was letting the thing. I didn't read y'all shit. How's fasting going? It's been hard body. Um, but honestly, the hardest part of it for me has been maintaining doing my five prayers at the time I'm supposed to do them and fasting. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I've been deliberately like compensating and, and feeling justified and in, in not having to pray on time, which is wrong because. You know, I guess I've been feeling like shit, I'm fasting, but it's like, nah, I should be doing both. And I did do both when I was in jail, so I should be able to do it in the free world as well. But, you know, it's definitely a challenge, you know, fasting mentally and physically, especially like when I was saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm a person that has extensive like gut health issues. Like I don't know if I can see these. See them big ass scars and shit. Oh shit. You know, and that's not counting. I got not to. You know, I don't want to be stripping for y'all, but I got all kinds of scars, man. So sometimes when I don't eat for a long time, my stomach get all bubbly and crampy, and that scar tissue cramp up. You know what I mean? So it should be hard body. It should don't be easy. But it's a sacrifice, you know? It takes hard work. It's a way of life. And you got the glow. You know. Hello, Evelyn, Evelyn Ivy. Who am I and what do I do for a living? I am Sirius Jones, a.k.a. J. Winters, the only great one left. Um, I'm a former corner store entrepreneur and more. Arter, writer, arter. Yeah, I'm an art, artist and an author, so I'm an arter, yeah. Artist, writer, director, an MC, a professional battle rapper that has a new battle out right now versus arguably one of the goats of all times, Tay Rock where I kicked his ass all over the place. I have new freestyles I'm promoting on bars on I-95 is one. Also on the radar. I don't know if you've seen that with the green background with Drake and all that, you know. Uh, I have a new album called G.I. Jones, which is out right now, okay? All platforms. I also have a book. It's an audio book, but it's really like an audio film because I bring you through the journey of what battle rap has been, show you how I've used this mouthpiece. You know, I'm leaving the part of being a boss player out because I think people get miscon you know, misconstrued. But you know, I I'm a hustler that has learned how to use my mouthpiece to, you know, run up some, some bread in these streets. You know what I'm saying? But I've also learned how to do that in terms of lyrically. You know what I mean? So that's really who I am. I'm, I'm a hustler from Jersey. 
that has a really slick mouthpiece, a really big, you know, a big palate pause. And I like to believe a big heart, but I got to do a better job at showing that as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even say the accolades. You know, the accolades is, you know, if if you, if I may, you know, you know, if I may pop my shit once once or twice, you know what I'm saying? I'm probably, you know, not even arguably the first battle rap or, or street MC to go viral, you know, uh, when YouTube before YouTube was a thing, um, I was definitely the first battle rapper to receive a multi million dollar deal. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've lived in mad states. I've broken all types of records in terms of, you know, uh, views. You know, there's a lot of people that have come and got a whole lot of views and a lot of stuff after me. But when I was doing it, it wasn't even quantifiable because it was MTV. You know what I mean? It was uh, BT. And when those things would go on YouTube, they, they, there would be millions of views, right? And then they would delete them because it's copyright content. So in this era, I was getting a million views every other week. You know what I'm saying? Not counting being on MTV every night to 80 million homes. So honestly, I built a name that I've never really capitalized off of the right way. Because how can I reach all of these millions again without millions? Right? The way that I've been still able to reach millions it's through the culture, right? Through talking my shit, through these battles, through these freestyles on these networks that they might have half a million, a million subscribers. But when we're talking about the numbers that I was exposed to and that my name has been exposed to over the years, it requires a, a top of the food chain, you know what I'm saying, type of momentum. So that's what I'm back here building, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing here, love. We promoting the, the shit I got going. I'm letting y'all stay in tune with the growth as I'm doing shit, you know what I'm saying? And I'm doing my best to be a little bit more vulnerable about just life and letting y'all into what the fuck this journey's been like for me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm doing. Make sense? Respect, respect. Facts, yeah. Rock recycled in y'all battle, automatic loss for rock. Yeah, I mean, I felt the same way, you know. Should I post a video of it? You tell me, because there's a, a video where it's highlighting and showing like exactly how you recite. Should I post it for the fans? Because, you know, it's not my, I'm not trying to discredit nobody, but it's just like, to me, that's unacceptable in hip hop, especially at this level. I would never. How you gonna be battling one of the goats in recycle? Like, nah. Yeah, immediately he gets paid. All right, yeah, I'm gonna post it there. He said, "Hell yeah, respect you, John. Respect, man. You were the first. Yeah, I was the first for real, bro. And honestly, I didn't know. Um, I didn't know my real value back then." You know what I'm saying? And um, I've definitely underestimated myself. Um, and I didn't treat myself as I, as I should have back then. And I wish, you know, it's, it's, it's not no way, you know, wishing is for wells. But I've learned that um, when you build a, a name like that, it's imperative to protect it. You know what I'm saying? It's imperative to never put it in situations with people that really don't respect it, right? And that's what I did, unfortunately, when I when I did get the multi-million dollar deal, it didn't work, right? It wasn't just, boom, put Jones right in the machine, do, 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 press the button, we going up, blast off. When that's all it needed, right? But I misconstrued money with respect. I learned real quick, you know, when, when shit start happening, it's like, wait, what, what you mean? What you mean this? Like, I got a fucking $5 million deal, don't I? Like, what the fuck? Why can't I this? 
yeah, you learn real quick whether or not, <laughs> you know, that real respect priority level is there for you. But it's too late. You already signed. You already got your money. You already, you know, you're already in this situation where now you're attached to another entity that's over you. So for all my young niggas, that's, you might be hot, you know, doing your thing, getting your numbers, and you thinking about just getting a deal. If you can make your money off your shows, monetizing your content, and, and, and squeezing the juice pours out your own situation, do that as long as you can. And don't sign shit until they come to you with that baggy bag. That's like, okay, this you a street nigga, somebody comes to you with $4 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not going to tell you don't get that. Shout out to my man C. I ain't going to say his name because I don't want to hide him up. But he got a situation. $3 million. A street nigga from Brooklyn. Just ran to the right people. Had the right idea. Boom. Nigga bags already packed. I FaceTime. Nigga got suitcases laying all over the house. He said, I'm out, nigga. I'm like, man, I'm happy for you. But you know what I'm saying? If it's one of those, I'll say, yeah. But if, you know, if it's, oh, yeah, I got 25000 for you and a chain and talking about you about to be under this rapper or whatever, bro, nah, you don't need that. You know what I'm saying? If they really fuck with you, tell them to do some music with you, vibe with them, you see what a lot of niggas is able to do, which is keep that, that relationship, get that cosign, and, and still be able to do your own thing. That's the blessing, if, unless you got a real situation. Which I would love, to be honest. I don't feel too old or too grown or too whatever to have uh, a boss, even on my own boss. You know what I'm saying? I can do business with another boss and allow them to be in a position of power with me. I'm not beyond that, especially if it's smart, especially if I see that there's somebody that's productive, that has more information than me, about how to get me to the level that I haven't gotten me to, why the fuck would I not? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people get misconstrued notions and they just think that maybe you ain't looking for that. Nah, I'm, I'm not looking for nothing that's not looking for me. That's always been my logic. So if somebody is looking for a generationally talented artist that can make his own beats, that can spit some of the dopest shit ever, that got the melodies, that got the baritone Jones, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's kind of handsome, you know what I'm saying? And, and out here getting the ransom, I'm available, you know what I'm saying? To chop it up like a blender. But, you know, if it's if it's that, oh, I, I just need a young, you know, uh, blonde dread 16-year-old that's just raging about perks and you think that that's what's going to get you some money, bro, more power to you, but I'm on that longevity thing. That's why it's by the grace of a law, 25 years later, 25 years later, I'm still the main event on the number one platform in the world. It's not because I, you know, it's not because of nothing, but the value of dopeness appreciates, man. And I'm getting better still by the grace of Allah. This might be the most fire I've ever been, honestly. You know what I mean? Cleveland in the building, shout out. It was a five album deal. It was a five album deal with a six option, I think, or something like that. So it was 500,000 for the first album and it went up by 250 each album after that. And I got 100 bands up front. But you older with knowledge, they can't use you like the youth. That's what they're looking for. You know what's ironic? Right, that's a thing, right? And I don't care because I ain't sparing none of, nothing but a, a, a tire if it, if it fall off while we sliding on these niggas. Free honeycomb brazy. But this, it's this guy, this fat executive, they used to work for that label. I'm not even going to say his name. He actually saw me backstage Shout out to Top Dog, Top Dog Entertainment. Those are my boys. You know what I mean? Real dudes, solid, family-oriented type shit. I met them years ago, and they always been 100 with me. 
So when I came out to uh, L.A. not too long ago, um, he said, yo, pull up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Isaiah Rashad was performing at um, the Staples Center, I believe. And that shit was packed and it was lit, right? It was beautiful. So his, his, his family, his daughter sitting there on the balcony dancing to his shit. That shit was just so inspirational. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, nigga, you can still do it. It's right there, like, you know what I mean? That's that's what that moment said to me, right? So I'm sitting there, top right there, you know what I mean? And we go backstage, and this fat executive dude that used to work for the label was there with his artists, right? It was just some young, dread-headed nigga that just kind of looked clueless, just sitting there. But he looked like the typical, you know, guy that these exec niggas would think they need to sign, right? Some little fake Juice World type shit, R.I.P. Juice World, right? But one of them little emo looking, whatever, sad boys, whatever you call this shit. So this nigga has the nerve to say this in front of these people that we just sitting here on some player shit. We ain't talking about no music. We ain't talking about, yo, top sign me. None of that shit. We just vibing. You know what I'm saying? Having a good time, enjoying the show, enjoying family, enjoying just a dope, you know, night, right? And here this guy comes. This is how this is how soulless some of these people are. They don't have no shame. They don't have no guilt for really fucking people's lives up and robbing them, right? At their most vulnerable time, right? When you're coming from the street and making a transition to where this is it. You know what I'm saying? Now you're famous. You can't go back on that corner and, and do this and that. You can't go back to your hood thinking that they're going to look at you the same. They think you're rich. They know you with ludicrous, nigga. They looking at it like, yo, it's, we out or not? Like, You know what I'm saying? So this motherfucker has the nerve to say to me in front of all of my friends, my friends that are, that are in power and doing their thing that I'm not, we don't even have these type of conversations, but you got the nerve to say, the person that's been capping and, and, and probably finessing my budget from day one says, yeah, man, all you need is, is a hit record, man. Well, no, I actually had a, a lot of those with uh, <laughs> 2 Chains, uh, Gucci Mane, CeeLo Green, uh, T-Pain, um, yeah, that you didn't even promote. That you, like... I had a whole album with Hit Boy, who's the biggest producer out right now. Y'all want to dance around to my songs, talking about how fire that, but you got the nerve to say this shit right now, like, and just interrupt the whole vibe just to, like, be like, yeah, all you missing type shit. Yo, bro, I let that motherfucker have it, pause. I, I couldn't help it. I was like, no, no, no. Actually, what I really needed was a label that actually was going to support me instead of, like, just give me money and keep my budget and not put shit out with me, and not put me on no tours, and not have do no features when I'm recording your house, and not fucking do nothing but say a shout out at the end of Summer Jam when you ask me to make a commercial, and not, like, I just start flaming that nigga, and they all sitting there like, oh, the nigga's artist was like, <laughs> wallahi, the nigga's artist was like, I'll, I'll be back, like, you know what I mean? The nigga felt wild and comfortable, got like, yeah, you might want to keep walking, little bro, you know what I'm saying? Because these niggas don't give a fuck. Excuse my language. And they will sit there years later after you know, you know you ain't do nothing. To, and you got the nerve to just be talking like, yeah, like, and he said some shit like, he tried to make it seem like, on one hand, you like, nah, man, we support you. Da, 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 da. And the topic of money came up. I was like, bro, it was a fucking uh, $4 million deal. I don't even know it was four or five, but 500 What's the math on that? 500 plus 250 plus a million. That's a 1750. Or oh, that's 1,750 plus a million 250. So that's four or three. I'm a little elevated. That's three. Then a million and a half, so that's four and a half. Yeah, that's five million plus. And he tried to say it like millions. Well, like, what do you mean, man? I was like, bro, 
you know how much they're contract for? He was like, oh, yeah, options. Like, options. Like, so you saying, like, you trying to play me now. Now you trying to play me, like, as if saying, like, nigga, you wasn't nothing. Mother. Like, so on one hand, you saying, this is why these niggas be slow. Because on one hand, you saying, you had a nerve to break the silence here while we chilling and try to suggest that, like, I just need something, Right? When we're not even talking about me, we're not even talking about that. Why would you even do that, right? Because one, you feel fucking insecure. You feel insecure that you know what you really did, motherfucker. You know what y'all did over there. Y'all took all these artists' money and y'all didn't put them the fuck out and y'all didn't do shit when they land when your whole label was defunct to help none of these motherfuckers. That's what the truth is, right? So the audacity of these these industry people. But, you know, I just let him have it right quick, and he started, you know, no, nah, but, you know, pause. Yeah, no, nah, you know, I'm just saying, bro, you know what I mean? I have no disrespect. And, yeah, don't, I don't need you saying nothing. <laughs> if anybody was saying something, like, you know what I mean? That shit was, that shit be treacherous, bro, I'm trying to tell you. Because I didn't know for years, motherfuckers was trying to blackball me. Motherfuckers was going around saying, like, acting like I'm some, hard to work with head case and all this craziness when the truth was nigga we got three albums worth of work with the top producers in the game everything else that I could control y'all told me to stop I wasn't supposed to do no more battles and we just we don't you know we're not backtracking or even tripping off this but this is for the young artists that we think when you get that multi-million dollar deal it means you made it now nah, listen Sometimes that's the worst decision you can make is to accept money from the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? And I learned that shit the hard way. And inshallah, I, I won't have that problem again. But that's that's the game. You know what I'm saying? That's the game. You know, it's pimps and hoes, but not in a good way. You know what I'm saying? So if you're an artist, you're really just a high price hoe to, to a label. You know what I mean? If they think they can really make some real money with you, down the line, they might, you know, invest their resources. But for the most part, how do people think with hoes? They're going to get what you can get right fast, you know? And that's it is what it is. You're going to have your couple little thrills, you know what I mean? Have a walking up some hills, and that's it. Yeah, working with people is 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 a very it's a catch twenty two, right? Because you need people. You need people to one, just to bounce energy off, right? Because as humans, that's why people go crazy and wear solitary confinement. That's why they put you there for punishment, right? Where ironically, whenever I had to go there to me, it actually was like kinda like therapy. That's how I know I'm a little crazy. Because I actually liked being able to be alone with my thoughts more than having to deal with the the noise of people, right? But probably not for extensive periods of time, right? So I, by the grace of Allah, I ain't have to do it for no year or nothing. You know what I mean? That's a whole different sandwich. And that's why it's punishment and drives people crazy because as humans, we're built as herd animals. We're built as, you know people that need community in some way, even if you're a criminal, you know what I'm saying? Even if you're uh, some type of deviant, you know what I mean? The, the, the P word type of people, even they got little communities and groups or whatever. So long story short, if you ain't got no energy to bounce your energy off, it's hard to even gauge a lot of stuff, right? You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you could think something is dope, but if, no one ever validates it. Is it really dope? You know what I'm saying? Like, now, by the grace of the law, I'm, I'm sturdy in my mind and my experience and the shit that I've been through to the point where I feel like I know what something dope is. You know what I mean? Regardless, even if somebody else don't think it is. So this goes back to, and I'm kind of getting rambly, but this goes back to the full circleness of the new product that's is available right now. G.I. <laughs> Jones. The Art of World War, the Battle Rap Handbook, the Bars of I-95 Freestyle, the On the Radar. When you look at the penmanship and you look at the level that I'm at with this shit, I'm not accepting nothing but dope. 
Now, if I got to show you by performing it, the Tay Rock battle, et cetera, that I'm me. I got my own style. I'm not just doing something to fit in or to be like, I'm going to be the best version of me, and I'm going to make you like it. Pause. And if you don't, then it's just not your cup of tea. But I've heard all type of criticism that could have made me change what I really am and what I'm really about. But nah, we got we to gotta make sure that this shit is crystallized. So I'm going to be the best version of me. And that's going to encompass all this shit. Because the best version of me can do it all. Best version of me could could fucking sing. The best version of me could fucking f- freestyle or flow like Eminem speed if I wanted to, or this, or that. I could be in whatever pocket I want as long as I'm tapped in up there, right? And in here. As long as this shit is clear and I can let my creativity really flow the way it's supposed to, oh, it's no limit what I could do. And that's what, that's what we got to stay in that mode. And that's real God tier. Feel me? Um, okay, how do you remove you? You're not gonna be talking that freaky shit in here. You're not supposed to move for the world, you're supposed to move for God, no doubt. No doubt. Hey, did you do it in Coco County or Martinez? I was in Martinez at first, when I first got there, but then they transferred me to Coco County. That that was the first thing they was telling me that like, like you gonna be all right. But they was like you gonna be all right because if you was really, you know, a rap, they would have kept you in Martinez because Martinez I guess is twenty three and one and whatever. But um, I didn't believe that shit. I'm like nigga, it was shit. <laughs> I'm in jail fighting for my life. I don't care where you where it's at. That shit don't make it feel better to me. But I was grateful because Coco County was the first jail that I saw that really looked like a college dorm campus type shit. And they gave you a key to your cell. It's still a cell, but, and they're still gonna lock it at a certain point, but they gave you a key to it, which was dope. So you could at least lock it when you leave. And it was carpeted. It really looked like a, a college dorm room in there, but you know, any of that stuff, bro, is just, only reason I speak on it because I want people to learn from the experience and, and kind of see what it's like firsthand for me, but you don't want to be in no place where you got to bend over and, and spread your damn, you're like, come on, bro. Who wants to go do that? And that's why in my mind, if, you know, if at some point you don't change your life or at least do the things so that you never have to go through that again, then you must kind of, you know, that's what I be thinking. I be like, bro, because at some point it's just, but old habits die hard, man. You know what I mean? It's definitely, it's a thing that I can be hypocritical. I definitely, you know, seen way too much of these people's system and facilities. Big business, I already know. No, I do not look like Diddy, and that's weird. But I guess that's a popular topic, so you just try to fit Diddy in somewhere, pause. But, you know. But, yo, I'm about to get up out of here, though, y'all. I've been here chopping with y'all for like an hour. But, you know what I mean? Salute, Global Fam TV. You said I'm putting you to sleep. Honestly, I'm getting fucking sleepy, right? So, and I've been talking my shit to y'all for a minute. But, um, man, I love you in Chicago, too, man. Salute, brother. Anybody who feels I'm the GOAT, I'm very grateful, but it's my job to keep that standard up. So y'all let me know if I am. You know what I'm saying? Tap into my new shit. Leave a comment. You can send me a DM. Follow me on IG, The Real Serious Jones. Spelled the same way. You know what I mean? Share my shit, man. I need them shares. I need them likes. If you're trying to get a feature, tap in. As you can see, the bars is on fire, and I'm letting them go for cheap. Not cheap, but, you know, affordable. You know what I'm saying? So, appreciate y'all, man. Stay in tune with me like a guitar, man. You know what I mean? Always great music. Yeah, G.I. Jones is available right now. G.I. Jones, type that shit on all platforms. I promise you, you're going to jack it. We got everything from fucking dance all reggae shit to fucking boom bap 
to to real melodic trap. You know, we covered all bases like a fucking, you know, like a, like a catch it. But uh, much love from the Bronx. You know, send me some some of my rap song. Uh, yeah, send me your shit too, man. If you rap or whatever, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not bougie, you know what I'm saying? If you got some new shit, if it's fire and you send it to me, I'll, I'll show you love. I'll share it. You know what I mean? I do promos for niggas, all the shit. Walkthroughs, whatever you got going on, just tap in, man. As y'all can see, I'm on the rise like an elevator. So the price is going to be going up. So, you know, while I'm in grind mode and I'm still in, t in this come home run where, like, I'm really just getting the algorithm back up, tap in with me, man. Let's build. But life is serious, man. I love y'all. Slam alaikum to the believers. May God bless all your families and, and your bank accounts. And be safe out there. Get your money. Don't do nothing stupid. Salute.